wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming to here uh, with the podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here, guys. If you want to see the uh, video version of this podcast, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification. It's free for an unlimited time. You can press that button. It will give you this warm, fuzzy feeling inside that will make you feel like you actually completed something in life and you're part of something much bigger than yourself. There's over 3,500 videos. I think it's 4,000. We're probably closing on over there now. It's pretty crazy. Um, so check all those videos out. You can see over 700 podcasts on the Chris Voss show and the nine other podcasts that are at the cvpn.com. Go to goodreads.com for just Chris Voss. You can see all the books and authors we've been reviewing and interviewing over there. Also, take and go to facebook.com for just the Chris Voss show. You can follow us there. There's a three or four groups actually on facebook and also on linkedin that you can take and check out as well we also have a facebook group for cs uh that's c uh, facebook.com forward slash c e s uh show and you can check that out we've got uh, actually we've got ces people in there from cta including the president gary shapiro who actually really you know, wanders in there and talks about stuff so if you have products you, from ces you want to take in there and share them you can as well today we have a excellent guest we're going to be talking about they are at the ces show in a virtual sense uh the company is called robo eats and this is going to be pretty darn amazing we're going to be talking about a robotic kitchen today i have with me the uh uh, co-founder we'll be interviewing him on the show alex bar uh he is a innovative and entrepreneurial c-level operator whose experience spans a range of industries including financial services payments technology consumer packaged goods and loyalty uh he's highly skilled at scaling businesses and working with leading brands like kroger lobas Amazon.com, Starbucks, Google, Apple, and Home Depot. As the group vice president at Black Hawk Network, uh, he was responsible for the U.S. revenue growth of $15 billion, including digital, physical, and SaaS-based products. Prior to his expanded role, he was the head of original content. Uh, Alex has launched new products that become the most successful products in company history, driving large bottom line growth in the triple digits consistently. Most recently, the book Location Local mo mo Motivation was launched in 2018, which became an Amazon bestseller. So we have an author as well. Uh, prior to Blackhawk, he was the founder of Samba Connects, specializing in selling a suite of solutions to over 15,000 SMEs across Canada, US, and the UK, including processing, gift cards, production, et cetera. Sam Connects, which grew from zero to 60 million in revenue within six years. And uh, he negotiated the sale to Black Hawk Network in 2016. And he's here to talk to us about his newest project at CS 2021. Welcome to the show, Alex. How are you, my friend? Thanks, Chris. I'm doing great. Thanks. Right. Awesome. So uh, let's talk about what you guys are doing. But first, uh, give us the dot com so people can look these up on the interwebs. It's uh, www.roboeats, with a Z, E-A-T-Z, dot com. There you go. And uh, we've got some background on you. Anything more you want to tell us about yourself? Any more plugs you want to plug before we talk about the company? No, let's talk about the company. All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you're, you're here, so, you know, you are the company. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding around. So uh, tell us about the company. Give us just an overview, and we'll get into some of the details, uh, and then we'll get into what you guys are doing at CES. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, thanks again for having uh, having us. Actually, the company started with um, a restaurant tours who have ten restaurants back in 2010, and they started to automate their back end kitchen to make it more efficient. They had a real problem with getting you know good staff. It was a quick service restaurant, and they developed this robot and this robot automation kitchen to kind of take over a lot of the mundane tasks. And, and when I met them, 
they are a great technologist, wonderful uh, a, a group of folks who have built something extraordinary. My involvement came in last year to help them scale it. The restaurant um, is ready to go and the capabilities of, uh, of the robot to scale in other locations, business campuses is ready. So my, my job is here to, to kind of like push it, make it happen in North America and around the world. And the video is pretty cool. I was taking a watch of the video. So what are you guys launching at CES? We're actually just launching the, the robot. Um, it's called ARC3. It's like ARC, you know, when you think about Noah's Ark. No, no, it's not that, Chris. It's Autonomous Robot Kitchen. It's the, it's the most advanced autonomous robot kitchen in the world. It cooks about a thousand hot and cold dishes, uh, up to 80 ingredients, and it spits out meals every 30 seconds. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know. And what's different about this, especially within COVID, it completely self-cleans and sanitizes. So customers um, don't have to worry about it. Or if you put this in a hospital, it'll do all of the things that it needs to needs to do to keep it keep it clean. This is really cool. I'm seeing a lot of this in, in a lot of the press stuff we've saw, seen from uh, CES show. Uh, you know, there's lots of UVC devices, lots of cleaning devices, lots of ha- hands-off devices like this is. Uh, and it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's a robot, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it is. And so you got, you know, this robot arm and this intelligent software that tells it how to make a menu, how to go clean dishes and the order in which to cook. And the variety it cooks, it, it can cook about a thousand different meals. So if you want a breakfast bowl, you can get that. If you want chicken wings, French fries, power bowl, it can do that. So it's, it, the diversity is fantastic. That is awesome sauce. I mean, I, I'm just excited to, can I get one of these for my house? Because I'm you, just you so know sick what? of it, cooking. We can make a compact version just for your, for you. <laughs> I can't afford to get married. So I, I, and I'm a horrible cook. So I need, I basically, I, I, I just, for my dating, I just, I go on cook sites and try and find a good, uh, a a person who can cook well, but I can't. So I, I need a robot clearly because, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I can afford a robot either. So uh, hopefully you guys take a check anyway. Uh, I'm just kidding around. It doesn't bounce. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Well, and it's a check. I mean, it, as long as I got checks, there's money in there, right? I think. I don't know. Yeah, I, that explains why the bank is calling. Anyway, guys, uh, so what are some of the – how did you guys come about this technology and develop it? Yeah, so it was really – the, um, the f- folks behind it were restaurateurs trying to solve a problem. They partnered with aerospace engineers to say, okay, you know, we're, we're food guys, and we know how to make great tasting food, but we want to automate the whole process. So th- that was the goal is to, to create a machine that was self-contained. It's 200 square foot. You can drop it anywhere, um, school campus, corporate business center. You can drop it and it'll spit out a food um, on demand. What is really cool about this is the, the software that goes with it, Chris, is you can actually personalize the whole menu. So like you said, you can come in. I mean, it's not going to be in your house, but you can actually personalize and say, I want more broccoli. I want less broccoli. Or if you've got a high blood pressure, you can say, you know, clock back on the sodium. Or if you've got diabetes, you can clock back on the sugar. So you can actually really make it personalized. (laughs) It sounds like something like, you know, it'll self-regulate your diet. It's like, no, you don't like it'll control the fridge. Like, no, you don't get the soda pop today, Chris. No, no, not for you. (laughs) <laughs> no salt for you <laughs> we've 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 calculated your caloric uh yeah. intake today and uh yeah nothing for you uh but no i watched the video on it I was reading some of the details of this and it's really cool i mean it basically uh, it, it's not just the robot itself do you guys also sell and develop the uh, the cooking mechanisms that i saw in the video yeah so it, so when we when people think about the robot it's the whole system so the whole system the robot the containers that hold the liquid and hot coal um, foods are there. And the big, you know, one of the big things here is just c- food contamination. Like I, I don't want to remind Chipotle and, you know, some E. coli, but this really, cut, <laughs> this really cuts down on, on, on contamination because there's no, there's no cross um, contamination of foods going on. So it's actually grabbing a food, cooking it, cleaning the dish, grabbing it again. So this, this robot software and the whole system works really, really well to kick out food every 30 seconds. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, man. It brings the, the plate over. So it's totally a, a, autonomous, prepares, cooks, 
uh, serves a variety of hot and cold meals, self cleans and sanitizes. I actually need that for me. I should become a robot. You should just mount my head on it. And then it'll just kind of do everything that I don't have to do while I can work or something. I don't know. Watch TV. Uh, it, this is interesting too. It reduces food waste. This is probably important in a world like ours these days. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So in, in, in just the U S alone, you got 45 million, um, food waste that goes out like a, you know, that's a couple of 45 million tons of food waste. So that can feed about a quarter of the world's population. Um, and that happens on a daily basis. It's just, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And so this, when you have something like this, everything's measured and portioned. So, you know, exactly as the consumer, there isn't going to be any waste. Um, and as when you get the food to fill in, there's a lot of waste that happens when somebody gets, let's say a head of let- lettuce from a restaurant, you peel off the top pieces of the, the lettuce and you cut down the middle, some parts are bad. All of that is food waste. This mm. eliminates all of it. Wow. And that's important today because, you know, number one, we, you know, we know we're, we're everyone's trying to conserve environment and food consumption, food waste. And we see a lot of that, you know, in New York, in New York, uh, uh, in New York city about, you know, the, the amount of food that's thrown out, uh, and, and yet we have people that are starving and, and everything else. So food waste is definitely important. Uh, this is kind of interesting too. Ingredient storage is a factor in here. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it has, um, there's a couple of key things about the robot system. Uh, the robot, uh, Robo Eats Arc 3 has 80 cartridges and that holds 50 solid ingredients. So you think about spinach or chicken strips to um, sous vide steak, French fries, all the way to 30 liquid ingredients. So that's pasta sauces, that's, you know, oil and vinegar, that's Caesar dressing. And the robot is programmed based on the menu that you want. So if you want a Caesar salad, it'll go grab romaine lettuce, it'll grab the Caesar sauce, it'll grab croutons, dump them in, mix it up and give it to the customer um, really quickly. So that, that storage case is important. But the key is that you actually don't have to refill this for a thousand meals. So it can go on giving food for a, a thousand customers before it needs to be refilled. And that's a, that's a big deal because you don't need to have somebody going in, tinkering with it to refill, refill the whole system. That's pretty awesome, man. Do, so do you see, does this need to operate in an environment where uh, it's just the robots interacting with each other? Or is this something that could work in like, you know, say you had 50, 50 or 75, 25% humans to robot ratio? Yeah. So, so this is actually meant to be completely standalone. Mm-hmm. You would have, I would always recommend that in, in the beginning when you launch this to have a customer, you know, uh, an employee explain how it works. And you need somebody to refill the containers of food, but that's the extent of it. Beyond that, you don't really need human inter- interaction. Like it cleans it by itself. The whole station's got UV lights. Um, and it even will send a signal when food is getting short. So if your chicken strips are a quarter of the way to, to, to being finished, it'll send a signal over to the supplier and they'll bring their truck in and you know you have the human being fill the bag up. See, this is another reason I need this at my house. It does the dishes and stuff for me. And then what's also awesome is it'll tell me when I'm out of chicken wings because we can't run out of those. (laughs) Um, So there you go. It's personal. It's got some uh, personalization to it where you can easily customize the uh, uh, dietary nutrition count with your fingertips. So basically this thing can starve me to death if I'm not nice to it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it'll hit, it, like you were saying before it could if you can regulate your control of uh substances um in, in the environment but no in the in the actual app you can actually say i want more broccoli less broccoli um it, it has the programs that it could be integrated to the hospital system so as soon as somebody has um you know they had a surgery you can give them a specific meal set to heal them faster so there's a there's a oh, lot wow. of things you can do to to enable it you can have the paleo diet built right into a version. You can have something that's um, keto diet version built right into the same menu item. So you can actually go and toggle between the different versions. This is so awesome. And it's made for today's days because, you know, I have a sister in a care center and we've been struggling with the COVID and, 
the COVID getting passed around the care center. Fortunately, she did get COVID and just, she just soared through it. She was uh, asymptomatic. So we are super freaking lucky, but uh, sadly, a lot of people there didn't have the same experience, but you know, hospitals too are trying to, you know, contain everything and, and viruses and, and all that good stuff, especially with the new strain coming out. So I can see this really being an incredible use for those facilities. Yeah. And it, when you think about, especially senior care centers, like it, everybody might have a different diet restriction for sure, right? And this way literally could be programmed of what you want to, oh, what wow. person should eat. Um, not day in and day out, but you can actually program it to, to, you know, one day it's tomato soup, it's something else, and you can keep on going with that. And then in the hospitals, it's 24 seven. So at nighttime, when most of the food cafeterias are shut down, nurses, doctors have to grab a, grab a sandwich or grab something that's pre-made this way, they can go and get fresh food made to order custom right there for them. So it really services something on a 24 hour industry. I really, I really love that idea. I've been stuck in hospitals visiting people. Fortunately, I wasn't in them, but uh, I've been stuck there when they close, when the gift shops and everything closes yeah. and you're like, Hey man, I want some food. And, and it actually it was worse. One of my other sisters had to go to the hospital this year and we couldn't go into the hospital. We had to stay in the lobby and I'm like, I really need some food. And they're like, yeah, it's all closed off, buddy. But no, this is this is the future where things are going. Do you see this being adopted in a lot of fast food uh, places or maybe small business? Uh, say I owned a restaurant, you know, just a one stand restaurant. Yeah. Uh, something that would adopt there. Yeah, I, I think the fast food industry, especially places that have high turnover, um, look for a variety of different meals or a specific meal. You could be an Italian restaurant themed, or you could be a bowl theme. So that, that could work. The, the also what's happening is that most restaurants nowadays, obviously they never had the footprint to think about COVID and social distancing. So this really solves that problem because you don't have to worry about social distancing. You don't have to worry about making employees not bump into each, into each other for a while. And I, and I would imagine this is still going to carry on even with a vaccine of, who's got the vaccine, who doesn't. And, you know, you got to worry about the reality of it. Um, so this is a, a problem that will solve a solution that will solve a lot of those type of problems. Definitely. I mean, even in my, my care center, my sister's care center, uh, I mean, she has immunity for, they say about 90 days at, at the very least, hopefully longer. And hopefully by then she'll get, uh, she'll get uh, the needle um, of the immune system uh, thing. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, I think there's, a, there's about half of them or 60% of them that don't want to take the, the uh, vaccine. So, you know, we're, you're kind of stuck with this dilemma. And I think hospitals across the country, to my understanding, are stuck with this dilemma of like, do we let these people keep working here or do we just have to basically get herd immunity by inoculating as many people as we can and let those other people work it out? So there you go. Uh, creates meals in 30 seconds plus. Uh, new menu items added in five minutes. Uh, I imagine, is there like a is there, is there a computer that it works with that you go to and, and communicate with the Wi-Fi? Is there, is there a pad that you interact yeah. with? Yeah, so we're launching the restaurant in about two weeks. And there, there's two ways to order. One will be with an iPad or it'll be just with your phone. So just, you know, download the RoboEats app and you can just order it and pre-order it. And it's, it's pretty cool because it'll sense where you are. So if you're 20 minutes away, it won't start making your meal until you're five minutes close to the, the actual restaurant. Oh wow! Tell you you know what ticket number you are and where the food you should pick up um, at that location, and so yeah, it's really really seamless and easy, intuitive to to order something. That's one of the things I really like about apps and fast food places is because I hate doing lines, and so I love being able to you know put in the app and order my thing, and that way you know you can zoom through the line a whole lot quicker because you know you don't want to be standing in the lobby for any length of time, at least for the next year. Um, and God, you know, God knows what else is, this is really cool too. It's 24 seven. I know a lot of fast food joints that operate 24 seven, but you rarely see people there. And I've always kind of driven them by them and go, Did they, I wonder if they really make a, make or break their money on the 24 seven thing. Um, you know, especially in smaller towns and stuff. I've always been kind of curious about this. Um, and so it can, and there's, there's sometimes where I go there and I don't know where the employees are. <laughs> like, you're just like, Hey man, you there, what's going on in there? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this, you, you wonder, you know, if they're just playing around in there or, uh, I don't know, um, doing TikTok videos. Um, so, um, or watching them, that's usually what I'm doing late at night. Um, 
I got to love the TikTok. So uh, this makes it so, you know, you can have cost effectiveness. You know what your employees are up to. You know what things are doing. Um, is there a video camera on it where you can see what the, you can like a buzz in from remote and see what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. You can actually log in. Um, we have the capability when we launch the restaurant, you can see your food being made. So the robot, um, you can literally watch the food being made as well. And so going back to your point, Chris, it's, it's interesting because that 24 seven, especially North American 24 seven economy or Asia's 24 seven economy, you know, things slow down in the evening, but there's still customers. And if you don't treat those customers well with fresh food, quality ingredients, they're going to go somewhere else. And so this allows you to kind of get that where, whether you're a convenience store, a grocery store, you know, you, you service that, that customer base that, that helps them achieve a healthy lifestyle or achieve good food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it looks like what you have is there's a whole like giant room system to this. You have what I think are the storage bins and then you have the, the big arm of the, of the robot. And then you have the cookers and stuff like that. Is that correct? Am I yeah, you got it. Yeah, the storage bins are in a, in a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. uh, temperature controlled environment. So depending on ingredients, it's, it's set at a certain temperature, the arm sits right in the middle. And then the cooking devices would self clean as well. The cooking devices are like induction cookers. And uh, that's one of the patents that we have is the way it actually cooks and oscillates. And it's got this really cool, I'm getting geeky here, but it's got a cool paddle depending on the type of food you want it to make, whether it's a stir fry or something that's um, with noodle base that will rotate the drum in a specific way to cook it based on what you want. And then is that UVC lights that I'm seeing there? You got it. Yeah. So there's, there's lights in the top because of course it's not good for humans, but yeah. robots. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay for robots. So yeah, you do, we do that just to double um, sanitize all, all the food. Nice. Nice. Yeah. We've, we've been reviewing just a ton of UVC dash or UV dash C products uh, on the show. In fact, we've been using, we use here at the house UVC vacuums, uh, we've got UVC things that you throw your keys and your phone into to clean yeah. them. It's the, it's the latest, greatest thing, but yeah, you, you don't want it on your skin. No. Um, and, and, and Chris, it's interesting. I remember going to Japan 15 years ago and I would go, we, I was on a, on a tour and I, they would use the UV light back then. Oh wow! To, you'd, you put your, your keys and your phone, anything that you would touch and, or your Blackberry back then through the device or Palm palm pilot through the, the uv light and then you'd pick it up on the other side and they had that back back then and um so it's not new tech it's just it's yeah. now it's being used a lot more because it works it's probably why they've done better with COVID than we have one of the reasons at least yeah. um yeah I, I, japan they're just so wonderful they're so advanced uh, than the rest of us i think i think they have just like super fast internet and everything else uh what haven't we talked about about your product what have we touched on or covered no, I think the biggest uh, the biggest thing um, that I, maybe we didn't cover. I mean, we call it auto replenish customization, but really the application is fairly broad. And I think about it, you know, grocery and gas, the convenience of the twenty four seven. You know, it's great for a quick service restaurant, somebody who wants to retrofit their own kitchen or launch a new type of concept. It's great, you know. Right now, not many as many people are traveling, but at airports or transportation hubs, it's great because you can actually order your food before you get there and just pick it up and go. Stadiums, and uh, the big one is going to be business centers because when you think about, uh, typically, if you got three thousand people working in a in, a, in an office, it's not going to be three thousand people showing up now. It's going to be three hundred or four hundred. So it's going to be less possible to get fresh food because it just the ROI isn't there. So this solves that problem in a big way. And then, uh, you know, the, you're right. Uh, one of the problems that, that a lot of fast food companies have or restaurants have that they don't, I don't know how much those owners pay attention to. Sometimes I want to call them up and be like, Hey man, are you paying attention? Like if I owned a fast food restaurant or a restaurant, I would always go out and check to see the, what the line is, the line of cars, the line of people. Um, you know, I've been in those airport jams where you're racing to the plane and you're trying to get food. And I've, I've had to bail sometimes, just go screw it, keep my food. Um, yeah. And uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a loss of revenue to it that, that I don't think a lot of these companies re re recognize. So if you see a huge line of cars, I drive to someplace else and I just go, oh, I'll just go eat someplace that's more easier to get into. Same thing with if I see a giant line out of store or uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's a loss of revenue to that business 
because they're not processing quick enough. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the issues that I've always had, cause I study business is like, if you go to a fast food place and the gal says to you, uh, hang on, wait a few minutes, I'll take your order. She's messing up the whole process and yeah. usually have a longer line if they approach it that way, rather than take your order, get that baby cooking and whatever. And so uh, anytime I've seen that, I've seen a mess up. And so the beauty of taking the human element out of this um, just makes things more efficient, but also provides more revenue, I, I would guess. Yeah, for the small, and I mean, it's 200 square feet. The typical restaurant, you know, so the cooking area alone, the kitchen area is like a thousand. So, so yeah, it's way better ROI. And the consistency of the food and the quality of the food, it's hard, you know, it's too bad. In the food industry, it's, it, this is all virtual. So talking about the robots, one thing, but the food quality is, is amazing. Like the, what you get, because it is built by restaurateurs. The quality of the food is consistent um, and the taste is really, really great. And you can see some of those images on RoboEats.com of some of the food menu items, just a sample. Yeah. And then the probably the other part is make sure you always get hot fries because there's nothing worse than getting a hot burger with cold fries. You're just like, <laughs> oh man, I just got gypped and uh, all that good stuff. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that are talking about going in this space. Uh, what's interesting is, I, and I'm seeing the space that you have, and I don't know if this is just a prototype space, but is this a box delivery system that I'm looking at in the video, or will it be a thing where you'll actually go into, like, say, a McDonald's, and you, you'll you'll have to build out the space there? You can do both, actually. You can actually put it into a 10-by-20 container and mm -hmm. drop it in, in the middle of a mall wow. or outside of the, in the parking lot mm -hmm. or in a plaza. How about my garage? You can do that. <laughs> I know you got a big garage, Chris. <laughs> I do. It's two cars. So hopefully there'll be room for one of the cars. That's too funny. Or you can actually have it like a restaurant. So you can have it like envision a Chipotle. The, the robot is at the back and there's a few seats in the front. Chipotle <laughs> is like, you know, this, this is the whole reason to have one of these. Like this is this is like Chipotle with the CEO just needs to go buy this thing. <laughs> That's just it, man. Put it in every store. Uh, enough with the Chipotle uh issues but yeah i mean i i had a friend years ago who uh he got hepatitis b from taco bell You're yeah kidding. yeah no no i'm not kidding uh it really damaged his liver and kidney uh they, his his uh his doctor said you can never drink alcohol ever again or anything because you're on the edge uh and living in vegas uh i had a lot of different times where especially like the buffets the buffets oh, yeah. can get weird in vegas and one of the problems is vegas every every casino is a small city unto itself and every morning there is a small city worth of food that's delivered to the basements and a lot of times those foods will sit out for events i've had food poisoning at the wind uh that's a big deal you can see the thing on the chris voss show um fortunately i took pictures of my food before i ate it um but we're uh, you know we're doing we're actually doing like a ces show after show yeah showstoppers or pepcom it wasn't their fault but you know they have it catered and so what they do is they have these giant shelves of food and they have them waiting in the hallway <laughs> and sometimes I don't, I don't cook. Yep. And yeah so it'll sit around for an hour hour and a half and you got bacteria and there you go um so yeah there's a lot of different uh places to facilitate that as well anything more we need to cover on uh, what you guys are doing there at ces no, it's great I, I appreciate the opportunity and, and i think that last notion of the food at the cross contamination, but it's also traceability. We, we there's sensors mm -hmm. to know the temperature of the food, it you know how long it's been there, because you can't rely on humans. Unfortunately, you need robots to assist you in a way, and just to just to make it safe for individuals. I remember when I got salmonella poisoning. Man, it was the worst yeah. experience of my life. So ever since then, I'm I not that I overcooked my chicken, but I, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty close. So contamination food safety with robots really assist humans to, to make it less, less opportune uh, ways for foodborne illnesses to get you or me or anybody else sick. Mm -hmm. So if companies want to reach out to you that are watching this uh, from our CES feed, um, what's the best way to reach out to you guys, get involved with you guys and find out more? Yeah. So roboace.com or info at roboace.com is the best way to kind of reach us. Um, on the website, there's 
uh, a form you can fill out name, address, company, and email address, and we'll get back to you pretty quickly. And that's that's the best way to get a hold of us. All right. And uh, uh, also, if you're at the CS show, you have press access or you're, you're, you have the CTA access, uh, I believe you can just search them on the exhibitor directory, find their thing, get in contact with their PR agent. They have a whole PR package that they sent us of all the different pictures of food and uh, videos on how it cooks. And I think there's some YouTube videos that you guys have on your channel as well, too. You got it, we do Thanks. there you go so you can check that out uh well alex it was wonderful having you on the show sharing this thing i'm looking forward to it if you ever come up with a you know we review products on the chris voss show so if you ever want to send one just to review <laughs> wink, wink uh i don't know it's beforehand you gotta might be a little cost yeah <laughs> might be a little cost to, usually at this sort of cost rate they always go when you need you to mail that back to us chris um but no this this looks pretty cool and it's the future the yeah. future. I need to have one of those sound machines that does the, the future. Uh, so anyway, check it out. Uh, give us the plugs one more time in the dot coms to go to. That's uh, www.roboeats.com with a Z. There you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, thanks to my audience. Be sure to watch the YouTube version of this at youtube.com for chess Chris Voss. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Voss. Go to uh, facebook.com for chess the Chris Voss show. You can also join our Facebook group over there for CS at facebook.com CS show. And, uh, you know, follow the groups, the Chris Voss show on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Uh, be sure to watch our uh, continuing coverage of CS 2021. I'll actually be going on all month because they're going to have the materials up there all month and we're covering it and we'll see you guys next time.